Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Incompetent Nerds. I'm your host, Tank. I'm already drunk. Welcome to part two with D. Hey, what's up, y'all? We about to do it again. Round two. Let's do he it. He sobered up, so now you see that he's not slurring his word. We had a nice little meal. Um, but then again, now we're continue on with what we were talking about last episode, which is war. Dun, dun, dun. What is it good for? Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. nothing. Say it again. Come on. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to get to rush out with two in this bitch. Yeah. Oh, shit. Detective Carter and, T-T- and Detective Lee. Right. Oh, man. All right, so to kick this off, I'll show Tank the new French army of what they have. Like, All right, so they have a dude like Spider-Man, like fucking Green Goblin. Floating around with like an M16 and shit like that. On a hoverboard. <laughs> yeah. So we were discussing this off while we were taking a break. We were having dinner. And um, we were discuss- uh, discussing this off site. One on one. And it piqued my interest at first. Like, first of all, understand the military uh, implications of this. But also the fact that there are a fucking target without cover and air. Now, D, go ahead and tell me your reasons why you think this is such a good idea. All right, so once again, IT field, I do a whole bunch of automation. I deal with virtual reality. I deal with a whole bunch of other shit. I could tech the fuck out of that hoverboard. I could make it vulnerable to a fucking EMP if I wanted to. I can make that shit have face recognition to, like, search and find a motherfucker for you to destroy. So I feel like that's very pinnacle for a military. And I feel like the French Army shouldn't even expose it. They should have just kept that shit tucked. Made sure nobody knew about it and just spring that shit on to people. All right. That's a huge advantage. My thing is with the hoverboard is the pilot is exposed. Even with some body armor, Cavalier body armor, it's still not going to stop enough bullets coming towards them. For the fact that you're in the sky, it's perfect. Yes, it's great for scouting quick, but it's not as protective as a helicopter. For example, the U.S. Army Little Bird. That's the cool name. I forgot the actual name, but the little bird is all. It's a small black helicopter that folds up, easy to go, all that stuff, and provides information from the sky. Now, having those hoverboards, depending on how high they go and how fast they go, they're still moving target. And if they're coming, if they're moving in a straight way, as fast as they can, what's stopping them of, of a sniper to usually place farther ahead to taking them out? All right, well, I would like to bring up something that you said earlier. All right, so you said that um, there are vulnerable targets in the sky. You want to know who else are vulnerable targets? Soldiers. <laughs> of course, soldiers on the ground are always vulnerable targets. They're moving on foot. But here's the thing. I'm pouring me What's the shot. difference? You want another shot or you're going to hold off? You know what? Bit? I'm going to take one. I'm going right. to take one. You got me on camera, All so right. fuck it. Let's do I, it. I don't have your camera. I have you on mic. I think right. I gave you a little bit too much. No, I give you a, the box. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to bitch up on that one. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Because so, somebody got to work in the morning, you know? Yeah, it's fucking three in the morning. Look at this guy. Right. But um, <laughs> no, here's my thing. Soldiers on the ground at least have certain covers, certain protections. Not just they have body armor on themselves, but they also have the environment as well to take, play, take cover in. If you're in the sky on the hoverboard and you don't have that ground troop support to help cover you, well, you're just literally a, a flying bird that could get hit. That's bigger than a bird. But and any precise and any precise shot by whoever could take you down, be it by shooting the board and dropping you on your ass, or by shooting you and killing you instantly. But think about infantry. All right, so let's say I just fly in on the board, I get off of it, and then I program your face into the actual board. Yeah, I could get. But it even to if go somebody, through, but even if this is why we have drones. Find who you are. And then you could have weapons and stuff on a hoverboard. Yeah, but could this take is... you out right then and there. Or we could at least be able to find the actual target and know where they're at and keep. This is what we have drones. Keep focus on them. Be right. it actual large scale, you know, combat drones or even smaller scout drones. This is what we have drones. So we don't put soldiers at risk, especially in the sky. Now, the military implication on it is dumb. The tourist implication is amazing. You can make money all that and some tourists or shit. Especially I just think you... that this is some dangerous tech, man. I think you undermine how dangerous this could really be. Dangerous? How? This is okay. This is what I love about our disagreement. The dangerous part about it is you're putting the pilot at risk without actual any cover. Yes, you can soldiers put guns, at risk too. You can put guns and all types of shit. Soldiers are at just as much risk. But 
the fact that this person is scouting or even this has been perfect for scouting, but in dangerous situations, dangerous fields, we be it within an urban environment or open environment, it is dangerous because they're easy, they're easy target. Now, if you have a little bird in the sky, a helicopter, anything in the sky providing information, at least that pilot or the pilots on there are safe because one, they're at a certain distance and where, uh, when a bullet starts losing its momentum and starts to drop, they're at a safe distance. And two, they can provide that in, they can provide that information to the soldiers on the ground. Yes, yeah, soldiers on the ground, that sucks. Because no matter what, there are targets. They're on the ground. But is that information being fed to them? Now, the information is being fed to them on a pilot, on a hoverboard. You know, be it that they're going like, what, 30 feet in the sky, flying towards you at whatever miles per hour, mate, let's say 50 or whatever moving forward. You're still a you're still a target. Enough guns on you will take you out. Now, if you're going straight or strifing or moving left and right, you know zigzags, trying to get out of the way, somebody's gonna hit you, and somebody's gonna bring you down. Now, the information that you gathered, the information that you gathered, is gone. Be, be it because they hit the machine and you fucking fell on your ass and you're dead, or they hit you in a vital point and you're in the sky falling and you're dead. All right. Either or, you're dead. Let's look at the... All right. Let's cut the bullshit tank. All right. If I have a hoverboard and I fly into a mall, mm. I could kill everybody in that goddamn mall. If I have enough grenades, if I have an M16, I could kill every fucking body in that mall. Okay. And nobody would be able to escape. Nobody's faster than 130 fucking miles. Okay. No one's faster. I would kill everybody. If I went into Nostra mm-hmm. Mall... With a hoverboard, AK, and grenades, I will wipe out everybody in there. Okay. If I was at a football field where everybody was just watching, watching the game, no, you can kill every fucking body. Here's the thing that about shit that. is fucking dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous for a single person against unarmed opponent. Because but terrorism unarmed. in general is just it yeah. expands terrorism. Yeah. So no more. You think most indoor up a school malls is bad? Mo- think of having a hoverboard. In most there. indoor malls, yeah, they're pretty big, but I don't see them being impl- uh, I don't see them being as implicated as this. In where you have this fucking hoverboard, um, you have this fucking hoverboard in a closed area. What I could see it do damage is mainly open areas. That's what I'm saying. Like, if the military uses this shit within an urban environment, their pilot there's a higher risk of their pilot dying. There's a high risk compared to an open environment. Because if they're in an open environment or a wooden environment, they're flying over. At least they could get out of the fucking way fast. In an urban environment, you don't know where the fuck these bullets are going to be coming from. Because you could make one way, you turn one direction, next thing you hit another fucking group of, um, another group of uh, op fours or anybody like that right. that's going to hit you. You're fucked. At least in a open environment, you're fine. You can fucking go forward and right. like, fight back. Yeah. But the capabilities of this damn thing is endless. If it was a drone, God it is endless damn. because you don't have to worry about killing the pilot. I would the, the fuck out of that hoverboard. That hoverboard would be fucking insane if the French army brought me into that shit. It would be fucking ridiculous. I would have fucking guns on that shit. I'll have it fucking EMP proof. I would have that shit with fucking facial recognition. It would, it would be nothing you could fucking do. Yeah. That's only, that's only hoverboard one, you know. First of all, I'm EMP, looking at it from the future of how EMP, what it could become. EMP proofing is pretty fucking difficult. Um, the radio all, was, you know, damn damn possible. Television was damn damn possible. Yeah, this is the use of radio signals. Fucking Wi-Fi was. <laughs> yeah, all this shit was damn near impossible because of its time. Well, but let's, let's get the fuck off this topic because no bullshit. All of that shit was impossible until the shit was created. Yeah. The reason why the hoverboard experiment looks so... The Green Goblin's hoverboard, it was because of the shit it could do. Now, the thing is, that was fantasy. That's a comic book. Real world applications. Enough cops with guns could shoot the fucking Green Goblin out of the sky. No bullshit. Depends on how high you are. Yeah, but... They don't shoot infinitely into the sky. No, but no bullshit. Enough good cops with good aim could take out the Green Goblin. 
Now you don't. You could have a bunch of bad cops on the ground with. Well, not bad cops. You could have a bunch of cops on the ground with shitty aim. One if of them I'm is bound to hit a fucking up, propeller. They're not hitting shit. Hey, with a handgun, they're not hitting shit. A if bullet I'm 10 will be able. Up, a bullet will be no. able to hit a propeller. I'm telling you right now, be it with a fucking From shotgun. From stories up, hell bro, no. You'll be su- it's not going to be enough to fuck up the, the hoverboard. Cops are trying to shoot a motherfucker with a handgun 10 stories away on ground. Hell no. Yards away. No, that is not false information. <laughs> <laughs> fake news. Fake news. <laughs> That's fucking fake news. Fake news. Hey, shout out to fake news. Shout out to fake news, man. <laughs> No, but cops are trying to shoot. Fact, let's see how far a handgun can shoot. All right, we'll because they're not packing fucking AR-15s and shit like that on a regular okay, stroke. Okay, military police is an M9. I want to say it's an M9 yeah. pistol. Yeah, that's M9. Or, new, or, you, or Glock 19, depending on. We'll yeah. go with the M9 pistol, and then we'll move on to the M19. So, the effective range is 50 meters. All right. The maximum fire range is 100 meters. Okay. So... Now, it was tested with the height of 10 stories versus what? 10 story. If I could spell correctly, my drunk ass. <laughs> That's why I'm sobering up, baby. Let's do it. So, about 40, 404 feet. Now, we take that. All right, 404 feet. So, we're going to go ahead and go with length, of course, if I can find it. And then we're going to go with meters. Why do I have millimeters? Meters. To a foot. So, 50 meters. So, they have a range of 164. That's the effective range. Now, 100 it's 332. Uh, right. That's the so maximum. So, how rate. many stories is 328 feet? So, 404 feet. All right. So, we change this to 404 feet. That reaches out about 123 meters. So, oh, I don't want to fuck up the podcast recording. So, now we look up a Glock. So, that's a Beretta M9. That's typically military use and police use. Now, we look up a Glock, what, 13, 17, whatever the police is Glock, I think Glock 19. I'm not sure. Maybe 17. Who knows? Now, we look up a Glock. You see the range on the motherfucker. Glock on your motherfucking Glock. So, Glock is about the same. 50 yeah. meters. Yeah. About 55 yards. Glock 17. It's pretty standard. Yeah. yeah. So, it looks like the 50 meter range because they're mostly targeting ground on foot or ground. Uh, close quarter combat, you could say. Um... Uh, or close quarter uh, battle, CQB. Um, so how many yeah. meters is a story? So we're looking at... So how many meters is a story? So yeah, you probably just had to Google so that shit. Um, so 404 feet. So typically, a story is about 10 to 12 feet. So we're looking at 3 meters. So let's go with 11, be in between. So a story which is eleven feet is about three point three meters. That's one story. I don't know. I need Google. This motherfucker. Go on. Go ahead and tell Siri. You. Let Siri give you some false motherfucking information. <laughs> oh, oh. Let me take your human ass information over a motherfucker that got a whole database to look up and figure out. All right, right my bad. <laughs> my bad for being inaccurate. <laughs> Listen to Google <laughs> over a fucking human being. <laughs> My bad. You know what, dude? This is going to be the last podcast you're ever going to be on. <laughs> That's what I'm going to name the, I'm gonna name the podcast, this episode that these last episodes. How many meters is one story? One story is equivalent to 2.44 to 3.05 meters. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, I'll trust humans now. We good. All right, so seven stories, right? So we did ten stories, like you said, the damn hoverboard. But in Spider-Man's novel, the hoverboard goes a lot higher than that. The hoverboard is able to fly over this fucking, this, the, 
the skyline of New York. Right. So we're well, looking, I was going off so of hoverboard. Yeah. Human being hoverboard. So we're looking at Green Goblin's hoverboard. He's able to go hundreds of stories high and fly around. Basically, it's a fight against uh, Spider-Man on his the heights up there. But like I'm saying, you said 10 stories. Now, if we go back to about 10 stories, which is about 104 feet, 123, the maximum range of these motherfuckers is 100. But if you have enough motherfuckers shooting at you with at least handguns, Hell no. a bullet is bound to hit. Even if it hits, it's not going to do enough impact to fuck up the hoverboard. If you look at the hoverboard, how much you want to bet? It's a fucking rock. How much you... <laughs> planes are built with aluminum. That's because it's lightweight and it's strong enough to deal with that. But when it comes to actual force, why do you think they use fucking flat cannons even to this day to hit fucking... That's true. It's to shred the fucking aluminum. Right. That do is, damage. That's facts. Yeah. Even bullets when they were using World War Two, World War One, World War Two, that was enough. You had planes that were built with wood. You had pl- you had planes that were built with aluminum and other type of fucking metals, metals that were light. Right. But I bet you any money that motherfucking uh, hoverboard is built with aluminum. Right. Because it's lightweight and it's strong enough for the, whatever its purpose is. Now, when it comes to fucking. Um, Military applications, they could probably shield it in a way, but it's not going to be MP proof. Right. And it's damn well not going to be bulletproof. Yeah. It could probably take a few rounds before it goes down, but what about the pilot? What about the armor of the pilot? you got to also worry about the weight of the pilot and how high it could go with the weight of the armor on the pilot, the weapons, the application as in a whole. That's why, yes, it's a cool idea, but it's not practical. All right, when we you get slaughtered, stay, keep that same be, energy. You when we rather get slaughtered. have the if if that guy's job, the reason why he has arms is not to attack, it's to scout and gather information, and the arms that he has on him is to protect himself. But he is still a target. This is why I rather prefer a helicopter in the sky that can hover, that can hover fucking feet on end above in the sky. And chill there because why? The range on any, even on an assault rifle. Now, if we get an assault rifle. Oh, if like you hit him AK, with a rocket? Oh, shit. <laughs> now. You hit his ass with a rocket. <clears throat> the typical weapon used throughout the world <clears throat> is a, against U.S. soldiers is an AK. AK, AR-15. and AK-47. Yeah. Now, if we look up an AK-47 range. We're looking at up to 400 meters. Ah, oh, yeah, that's enough. So, there's an effective range and there's a maximum range. So, the effective fire range is 350 meters or 380 yards. So, now we change this shit. Remember, this is 10 stories. I'll have 404 feet, 10 stories. Now, we're looking at... <clears throat> where are you at? 350 meters. Yeah, that a hit. So, now your pilot is fucked in a field. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And that's an AK-47. Now let's change it to another weapon type. The most iconic M16. Right. So, the M16. Shout out to M16s. Oh, God. <laughs> so now we go to M16. And what's Sponsored by M16. Range? Now, their effective range is actually longer than the AK. Their effective range is 550, 550 meters. So now we change this shit to 550 meters. Yeah. You're fine. You're going close to 18... Going 1,800 feet. Whoever's on a hoverboard, it's fucked. Because now you are you have an effective range of these weapons. Pistols, yes, you can stay out of line. But with the military, with the military type cops, the military weapons the cops have now, like M16s and carbines and shit like that, Green Goblin is going to get taken out of the fucking sky. Or let's look this up. How high could a hoverboard go? Well, we got to find out that hoverboard, that French hoverboard. So we look up the French. Oh, we just fucking saw it. Where is it at? Right here. We are just watching a video. So. He was able to reach 34 kilometers between the French and the English channel. But how high was he? He wasn't that high. 
So August 4, 2019, he flew from the UK to France, French invader, uh, invader, inventor. Shit power hoverboard, blah, blah, blah. I want to see how high was the motherfucker. Look at the cars outside fucking revving their engines. See the helicopter find, following an item? So he flew 34 kilometers <clears throat> between the French and the English Channel in around 25 minutes. All right, cool. I bet your helicopter gets you faster. Hey, but being on a hoverboard is so fucking cool. No, yeah, it's cool. Do some cool tricks and shit. He was soaring over through the parade. It's cool when he backflip and shoots you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> what also comes in is the fact of, oh, of aiming. Aiming comes in a factor as well. You won't be Shoot great. you in the goddamn face. You won't be so it doesn't show talking it. shit then. It wasn't showing how high it can go. Let's see, how high can I go? All right, CNN, don't doubt me. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck, it's four years old. Damn, he up higher than a motherfucker. Could nearly reach the altitude of 500 feet. So he could go 500 feet in the sky. <laughs> M16 and A cake is still. It's well in the Chop fucking his range. ass down. <laughs> it's still. M16 is 1,800 feet. The AK was like, what, 16 or something like that? It's still in his firing range. No matter how high he tries to reach, 500 feet, he's still up in that bitch. And I'm telling you, a well-placed shot, fuck, motherfucker, even a sniper rifle. Of course, a sniper rifle hits way farther Especially if you're in his line of sight. He's down. Those are bigger caliber bullets. He is down. But an AK or M16, he's done. Whatever's yeah, but, on that board is done. So be it either an allied force, either an ally or an OP, opposition, uh, on all opposition forces, they are down. If you're going to a mall, it. if you're going to a football field Dude, with that shit, if a, it's a fucking wrap. Ay, baby, look at this. You're way. not outrunning in a, shit. In a closed environment like a mall, he's going to be well in that feet for handgun fire. Sure. Because it's closed and fire. Now, in a field, like a football field, a motherfucking um, baseball field, anything like that, then, yeah, it's difficult for security forces or even police personnel who don't have long-range long range weapons to take them down. That's possible. But in a mall... And that's just one in person. Goal, he, in a mall with security... What if it's like 20 of the motherfuckers they just come in and like... First of all, 20 fucking. motherfuckers in a mall... <laughs> and what mall you said? No, they, they're going to crash into each other. They're going to fuck up. <laughs> They're just floating that bitch fight. And they're going to be going way too slow because what they got to worry about is hitting certain corners and shit and dodging certain bridges. They're going to be fucked. Bro. First of all, they just, they trapped themselves. Yeah, they're probably going to take out some people, but they're fucked. Because why? They're in a closed environment. How is he going to get out? What are you going to do? Blow up the fucking roof? <laughs> First of all, know. a lot of them closed roof is made out of concrete. <laughs> you never know. You know, in case you're fucking, you're going to be an idiot. Like, I got to get out of here. Boom. <laughs> you just squash yourself like a bug with a concrete roofing. Not all malls had fucking glass roofing. All right, when we get fucking took over with motherfuckers on hoverboards, I want you to keep that same goddamn energy. I feel like you're putting in fear in the wrong thing. All right, you're saying that shit. Drones I'm are fucking at, scarier. I'm looking at where a hoverboard could be. Yeah. Like I said, I can make some insane shit if they hire me. Yeah, if somebody's It'd be some asking. crazy shit I put on there. Steve Jobs? It will be a fucking rap. I will fucking find you with that motherfucker. This is why we have drones. I'm like, oh, okay, we got his neighborhood. All right, cool. The military, you We got military, his window. Let's hoverboard his ass right now. Let's shoot his ass down with the hoverboard. You as militaries are working with drones as wingmen for pilots. Instead of having a human wingman, you have a drone wingman. So that means every military pilot from Air Force, Navy, Marines, Army, any pilot within those uh, within those armed forces will have a drone as their wingman to help protect them and help fight against opposition forces, be it from air combat or ground combat. Now, these hoverboard fucks 
it's not going to be a legit thing. And I feel like it's going to be a waste of monetary spending. The money where it will go to give you information, but it will also be able to protect themselves, will be through drones. If you have drones, we already have fucking jet-sized drones that are armed to the T to blow up shit without sending a single pilot out there to be killed off or even harmed in combat. We have drones. What's stopping them to making a smaller drone to carry a fucking M16 and able to gather information human-free but also protect itself by killing whoever it can on its way to deliver... It can still deliver send information, but kill information... To kill any opposition forces for ground troops that are making forward, that are going forward. What's stopping us from building a hoverboard the size of a drone with the M16 on it that could also use face recognition technology to find a person We have and drones with facial recognition technology. We already have What's drones. What's stopping us from having a hoverboard that you hop off and then it fucking shoots you in the face? <laughs> What's stopping us? Dude, here's the thing. You you're talk going, shit until you're you get shot from the face. sci-fi <laughs> to try to make it practical. I swear to God, if I had my guy Key on the show, he would say, stop drinking the Kool-Aid. If I would hop off my hoverboard and have that motherfucker Look, do you in. I win. never served any amount of time in the military. And I feel like I should have. Because of the history, the knowledge, and all this other shit. But my guy, Key, he was a National Guardsman. And I think his, I think his, whatever he was doing, he's done. But he was reserve. If he was on this show, and we saw that, and tell him, what are the, what are the practical, practical implementation of this hoverboard within the military force? Now, he's National Guardsman. But, still military. And this is only the first version of this hoverboard, by the way. Yeah, first version. But still, in urban environments, you are a fucking target. What's stopping you? What's stopping Op 4 from using barbaric fucking traps? Yeah, you're flying across like, oh, God, I just dodged them. Next you know, you just walk into a line of electrical fucking wiring because why they did that. Now you're, now D is now Toasty D. <laughs> you can have a hoverboard detect certain things around your radius to protect you, though. That's what I'm saying. And we don't even know if they have that in technology incorporated into the hoverboard right now. We only know that the motherfucker flies. That's all we know. We don't even know about the extra tech that they have in that motherfucker. That's my, all I'm saying. D, my thing is, we just, we're like 30 minutes into this shit. <laughs> we're still talking about the fucking hoverboard. <laughs> Fuck the hoverboard. Drones, helicopters, and ground troops. Fuck that. Or no matter the what going to be, by far, the, the most effective way of getting, gathering and fighting Gathering information and fighting opposition forces, no matter what. A hoverboard? You're just a fucking target with a pretty board. The hoverboard is the American fucking way. Oh, yeah? On Back to the oh, Future, yeah? motherfucker. Oh, yeah? it he is? had a. It is? Where did he run from, oh, from yeah? the bullies? He why had is a, a fucking guy, hoverboard. Why, why isn't a French guy? French guy's using it. Because they saw Back to the Future and they was like, yo, we need this shit to happen. We need some fucking Nike Air Max. And yeah, we need to those. fucking... You know, they made those? Nike actually made yeah. them. The wireless charging and everything. No bullshit. Yeah, I, I want to get them. It's like two grand. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I want to get them. Like, yo, but, I will wear those. And that's the price I stop. Having the, the Nike Air Max with the real life fucking hoverboard. With the Thriller jacket? With the M16. <laughs> with the Thriller jacket. Oh, my God. Woo! Well, you do know the M16. You fucked somebody up in class. You do know the M16 is leaving uh, as... Uh, Slowly getting out of the military arms, right? Yeah. You know what they're being replaced with? What? The Scar H. I mean, the Scar L. Okay, I can see. Also, the Scar H. Speaking of guns, all right, so um, off the rail, we were all talking about experience with guns and stuff like that. We, we were supposed thinking. to talk about that, but you were too busy <laughs> but, on fucking hoverboards. But 30 minutes later, you know, goddamn hoverboards. So, what was your first time with a gun? I was at a... Uh, with Key. I was at it with Key. Shout out to Key. I was at the shooting range and um, I was in the shooting range out there. And shot a revolver. I forgot what type of round. Um, shot an MP5 and a handgun. 
Ah. Now, I wanted to shoot a rifle. But when that thought came into mind, it was a free run. So it was funny. They had a celebration. Uh, free gun uses, but and but only pay for ammo. Oh, wow. And that was during Trump's, when Trump won the oh, shit. presidency. So that was their celebration. So I was like, all right, this is the only time I'm probably going to thank Trump. <laughs> <laughs> right. I didn't have to pay for a fucking gun. Right. I just had to pay for the ammo. So we're there. We're shooting and stuff. And it's, I was like, wow, this is pretty awesome. I always wanted to shoot a gun. Um, but the guy next to me, he was shooting a Scar H. And the Scar H fires a 7.62 rifle, a 7.62 uh, cartridge. Okay. Okay. And the bullet on there is a lot heavier, but it hits harder. Got it farther faster. He's also using certain sniper rifles. Um, the Scar H is also used not just that you could also use it automatic, which is a whole lot pop. This is this like a whole lot of heavy rounds. But also, I want to say he's also used as a marksman rifle because of the round. You put a scope on there, you can hit farther. And the Scar L, that's also between a semi or automatic, fully automatic uh, rifle, and it fires the same round as M16, a 5.52. And that one, I want to. I think that one has a farther reach because of the lighter bullet, but also um, it doesn't hit as hard as a seven six two. Now, in terms of bullets, uh, there's a five five two. There's the AK round. I forgot the size of the AK round. That's in the middle. That's hard. And then you have the seven six two, which is a bigger round. Right. And it's a lot heavier. So a Scar L is supposed to replace the M sixteen, and the Scar H is supposed to kind of replace the M sixteen. It's like a marksman slash fully automatic rifle. They right. both, I want to say, the Scar L holds about 30 rounds. The Scar H holds about 20 rounds. Either or. When I was there, there was a guy firing the Scar H. And I just felt the force of that Scar H. When he was pulling the trigger, he was pulling a semi. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Yeah. You could feel the effect. And I'm looking at my guy, Key, and I'm like, dude, I would not like to be on the other side of that right. motherfucking barrel. Yeah. Because you could just feel it. Bah, bah, bah. And then they fired the Scar L. I'm fully automatic with a hundred round uh, box. Wow. When you heard that shit, I was like, yo. I'm like, can we please fire that? My guy, my guy, Key was like, we got to go. Damn. I was like, damn it. But those were to be, uh, supposedly those were to be the guns to replace the M16. Because M16 has been in service since fucking Vietnam War. Yeah. Um, then for Carbine has been in service, I think, since the Gulf War. Mm-hmm. Now, the difference between a Carbine and a fully and a automatic rifle is a Carbine. It's a lot smaller, more compact, and compact than, a, than an assault rifle. Yeah. Um, so, like, the M4 Carbine, that's a lot smaller. You've seen it in video games and all types of shit. Yeah. You got your traditional M16... Um, one of my favorite rifles that I always wanted to fire was the M14. Ah, okay. The M14 was, um, uh, it was all wooden. It's now used as a, mar- now it's, uh, it's been modified and used as a marksman rifle. Mm-hmm. But when it was first implicated, it was a, I think it was 15, it was a 15 round clip that could be fired semi-automatic or fully automatic. And it uses a 7.62, uh, caliber. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, 7.62 round. And that motherfucker, because of that gun and the way it fired it, that bullet will go through not just the first person you just hit, but the motherfucker behind him. Shit. It was a very powerful rifle. It was a very, very powerful rifle. And what's funny was, we, I used to play uh, Soul Count with Key and all my other friends. And I was the only one on the team rocking the M, uh, M14. Now... In the game, I was able to switch it from semi-automatic to automatic. So I was I was the marksman. Right. I wasn't a sniper, but I was pretty good at certain ranges, and I would hit certain individuals. But I never forget, I was the only one on the squad who could use the M14 on fully automatic. Because even on the game, the recoil, even in real life, the recoil was fucking horrible right. when using that bitch in fully automatic. In the game, it was horrible because now you're shooting all over the fucking place. Right. I learned how to use that gun on fully automatic. Mm. So now, now I wasn't just a marksman. When it came to close quarters, I had that bitch on fully auto. Because now we're searching. If we're winning and we're looking for that last individual, I had that bitch on fully automatic. Because now you're going to take these motherfucking rounds. Right. Once I find you. And these are heavy rounds. And I will light these motherfuckers up. And I'll never forget Key 
was like Tank is the only motherfucker that can rock this. Because I think he, he, his main weapon was a Vow, which is already a, a gun that has a suppressor. Um, Mark used to rock, uh, used to rock, uh, I think, a uh, submachine gun and a gaunt, and also my friend Devour. All of these guys were on the, on the podcast. Um, Devour used to rock one and my other guy, Jay Moore, he used to rock one as well. I want to say, uh, assault rifle. There are many assault rifle types. But I'll be the only one rocking this gun. It came to the point that, like, when I find another games that had, like, the M4, like, either the, um, unmodified M14 I'll fucking rock it. And, dude, if it had that automatic set settings, I will fucking just let loose because I was pretty good with it. Yeah. Hell, back when I used to play uh, Call of Duty... What was it? Call of Duty uh, 2 or 3 mm-hmm. for uh, the Xbox uh, 360. I remember playing online. Everybody's rocking submachine guns. So the MP4, the Thompson, whatever. I was the only motherfucker in the squad rocking the BAR. Damn. Brownie automatic rifle. 20 round clip. And you can tell in the games, depending on what gun you rocked, depend on your speed. Mm. I was the only motherfucker on any teams rocking the BAR, just unleashing hell. Right. Rocking these guys. And I'll never forget one of the guys is like, uh, he, it was an older guy. He was those, because at this time, the chat between the teams could happen. And one of the guys is like, oh, you guys are cheating. He goes, we ain't cheating. Just because this kid with the BAR is fucking unleashing ass, and I was a kid at the time. He goes, because because this kid with the ER is kicking ass, you shouldn't be talking shit. Step right. up your game. And it was true. I used, At first, it took me a while, as any other game, you know, if you're rocking a new weapon that you're not used to, it takes a while to learn. Right. But, dude, after I got my hands on it, I was fucking ripping shit. Yeah. I only shot one gun in my life, but there was another gun that I held that I always wanted to fucking shoot. All right, so the gun I held that I actually wanted to shoot was a uh, it was a three fifty seven Magnum snub nose. So what oh, snub shit. nose means that right the nose is right the barrel it's, yeah the barrel of the gun is you know is it's shortened. shortened and my I'm not even gonna say who I almost fucked up and said it but it was somebody that shouldn't have that fucking gun. It was his brother's sister's cousin's <laughs> uh, stepfather's <laughs> best friend's uh, brother. Uh, there we go. Yes. <laughs> But when you pick that motherfucker up, it is so goddamn heavy. Mm -hmm. But I always wanted to shoot that because I know that some particular person told me that um, depending on the rounds, it'll knock you on your ass if you fire it. Yeah. So if you shoot the 357 Magnum with 357 shells, it's going to knock you on your ass. But this particular person, whenever he shot that 357 snub nose, he would put 38 special rounds in it. Yeah. So they kind of take the power off of the gun. But I was always like, if I were to get a gun to protect myself, it would be that thirty-eight, yeah, that three fifty-seven special. That's what like, I shot. I shot a thirty-eight revolver. Magnum. Yeah. I shot a thirty-eight revolver. That's what I shot. Yeah. Because I always want, for me, when it comes to home like home protection and shit, I thought a revolver would be nice. That's a stopper because you don't never have to worry about it jamming up on you or anything. Oh like no, that. it's on the fire. No fucking matter what. What damn near? Mm-hmm. Well, it's not like an AK because AK a fire with mud, water, like it doesn't <laughs> give a fuck. Nope. That shit's gonna fucking fire. It's like, oh, barrel's frozen? Don't matter. I'm still shooting. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. <laughs> but I actually shot a Mac 10 with some Latin Kings <laughs> like 13 years ago. <laughs> Damn, bro. How were you then? 33? <laughs> uh, fuck you. <laughs> but yeah, I went to a uh, school. I'm not gonna say what school, but um, it was a community college. <laughs> and. It wasn't in the city, though. So, I will say that. It wasn't in Chicago. It was in Gary, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right. So, do you know a lot about the Kings and stuff like that? Because I got a question to ask. Yeah, I don't know about Kings. All right. So, the dude that was the head of this set of the fucking Kings, he was Arab. He wasn't Mexican. He wasn't Puerto Rican or nothing. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Is that like a, a, a normal thing or do you know about that? Nowadays it's normal. Back in the day when the kings were first established, you had to be Puerto Rican. Ah, a Latin okay. king was Puerto Rican from the island or, you know, Spanish spoke, Spanish speaking. Um, you had to, that was the only way to be a king. Either you were from the island or you were born in the U.S. and but spoke Spanish. You were able to be a king. Now as time, as time kicked on and <clears throat> less than people were coming from the island to the States... 
and also less of the kids growing up because um, the king started in humble park um less of them will start to uh, stop speaking uh, spanish and become just more um uh, just speaking english they open up their requirements for more people so it wasn't just puerto ricans you had for latin kings it was started off as puerto rican and started opening up to uh, any other ethnicity so you had mexicans you had blacks you had whites you had arab you have any other body to go in there as long as they were able to you know take the go through the initiative process and then become a king Ah, uh, okay, because yeah, he was definitely an Arab running a, a damn near a fucking set full of Mexicans. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? In the beginning, Latin kings were just mainly Puerto Ricans, and then they opened up to different other people. When right. I went to high school, I um, met this white girl who was a Latin queen, which was funny, I thought. And then. Uh, Takashi 6ix9ine? No. <laughs> I mean, it was a white girl who was a Latin queen, and then. Um, which is, of course, an offset of a Latin kings. And. Then I met this, uh, I remember in college, I mean college, it was the same thing in high school, I met the black dude who was also Latin King. And then I had another friend who I went to middle school with who was Arab but became a Milwaukee King. A Milwaukee mm-hmm. King is a different set. I want to say okay. they, don't quote me on this because I'm not really, I really don't care for like the game life and so I never really like dove deep into it. But um, the Milwaukee Kings was an offset of the Latin Kings. Ah, okay. And they uh, they grew up on Milwaukee. I want to say the Six Corners. So you ever heard of Six Corners, Milwaukee? Yeah. Like Milwaukee, Irving Park, and whatever. That's where they fucking got big. Right. Okay, so um, I was actually really cool with the Arab dude. Mm-hmm. And the thing about the Arab dude is he doesn't he doesn't look like a damn game banger when you see him. He's much smaller than me, and I'm a pretty small guy. So I'm 5'6". He's probably like 5'4", maybe... 130 pounds soaking wet as they say. So what D won't say is that his girlfriend calls him fun size. <laughs> exactly. But, right, a much smaller guy, and he only wore, like, dress shirts and slacks every goddamn day at mm-hmm. school and shit like that. So I didn't even suspect that he was a game banger, though. But then, later on, as I got to know him throughout the years, I started realizing he was like... He basically found his way into that game because he was good at distribution and stuff like that. It's like moving stuff into certain particular areas, whether if it's guns and drugs and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's how he was actually get part of that organization. The Kings, they started off as a street game. Now, it's, they're slowly becoming more of a mafia. Right. And I'm guessing it was good to get him in there because he knows about... You know, yeah. getting guns and drugs within to certain places that, you know, it's hard to get in there. Yeah. So he has a whole set. I didn't even know. I kicked it with him before. And he's supposed to just fucking take me to, like, Walmart to, like, grab some groceries. Wait, was this the same place that you hung out with and played Tekken or Mortal Kombat in? No. <laughs> Who the hell was that? I remember that story. Who were you chilling with that? It was a trap house. But you should chill there and oh, play Mortal that's Kombat. Oh, homie. He's black. I'm not going to say his name, though, but he's You don't have to say nobody's name. Yeah. I'm not telling you to say nobody's name. Yeah. I ain't trying to be targeted, <laughs> motherfucker. Because I'm like, he'll fuck you up in real life. Yeah, I remember this one. You used to hang out with him. It was a trap house, but you were yeah. only there just to play video games. Yeah, just to play video games. That's facts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, this is a motherfuckers in the back just be getting served. You over here were just in front with him, just chilling, playing motherfucking Tekken or uh, yeah. Mortal Kombat. He had... All right, so, side note, so... This dude in the trap house, shout out to him. Can you see what game? He know who he is. I'm not going to say his name or nothing. Can you see the game? I'm not going to say what area. You don't have to say area. Can you oh, say what game? Oh, he's GD. GD? Yeah. Oh, GDs are pretty big. They're all around. Yeah. There we go. So yeah, I had GDs in fucking in my high school, and that's up here. Yeah, man. It's real. But this dude, so his trap house, in his trap house, he had every fucking system, every fucking game. Whenever a new game came out, he already had, he had it. it. So I'm like... That's a perfect fucking spot to go to. It's like, bro, he has every video game. And yeah, I couldn't get targeted. every game. Right. And I couldn't get every video game that I wanted. I had to kind of like time. save up a bait my mom or dad for stuff like that. Yeah. But whenever I wanted to play it early, I just go over there and play the damn game. You know what it reminds me of? What? It reminds me too when I was a kid. Uh, when I was younger. When you told me that story, I didn't yeah. think about it at first. But now it, it clicks in. I had a friend of family. Uh, they too, they were uh, they were part of a game. Um, from what I'm seeing, because I was looking up history on game bangers, yeah, games in Chicago, and supposedly this game is still alive. I thought it was fucking extinct. I thought they all died out. 
but it's not. So the game is the light and gyrus. And I remember going over to one of the trap houses and it was playing Tekken. I was playing Tekken. Didn't know I was in a trap house. They did not know. Yeah. And I didn't know early Tekken. on either. But but that's just kind of how it is because, um, all right, so for the viewers that, that never experienced like being in a trap house and stuff like that, mm-hmm. depending on the person trap that runs on the, the south trap side. house, everything is done differently. You know? This trap house was in the south side. Yeah, south, the one uh, I went to was south side. Remember too. back when South Loop was a piece of shit? Yeah. That's I where it was. That. And then when it got better... It no longer exists. Right, but it was soft. Loop. The trap house I was at, it was it was deep in the south side, but but everybody has their own different rules of how they're gonna run the actual trap house. Mm-hmm. So you have some trap house that will just be it's no air conditioner, it's no nothing. You just living in a fucking shithole. You have other places where you kind of it looks like it, a home. Yeah, it's furnished. You know, you might see you know some metal bars or some shit outside the windows, and you know cameras everywhere and shit like that. Yeah. But he pretty much ran it like kind of like a military base. So, before I go back to the whole like in King sort of shooting the M- uh, uh, Mac Ten and shit, let's go to this fucking part. All right, so I go in and I get fucking frisked, and they were very respectful with it. You know, they would just check out the book bag stuff like that, and then they take my book bag and they put that in another room, and then all of the doors are closed as to the pathway to like where the video games and shit are. So I don't see shit. So homie, so your boy had homies in front, had homies in all entrances, had homies probably doing shit that you didn't know of. Because I didn't see Cause no all drugs, you, I didn't see any guns. I you didn't see You were only shit. allowed, basically you could say you were only allowed to go to the living quarters. Right. And where, this is where you eat, this is where you chill, this is where you game. Nothing happens in this particular area of right. the house. But Everything in that particular else, room, there was no kitchen or nothing. There was only a bathroom and it was like, a you know, the whole game type of setup yeah. in there. Like a man cave. Right. You were only allowed there and that was that. And exactly. so you just chill there, play a game, talk shit, maybe watch a movie or two. And then when you're ready to go, hey, can I get my book back and go home? That right. was it. And End then the they story. searched me again and then boom, we good. That's kind of how it went being there. Yeah. So that's how he ran the shit. Yeah. So it's like two people search you, they grab your shit, they escort you, then you End know the story. same shit back. Yeah. But I never seen dress, I never seen guns because of course they don't want you to see anything. Of course they don't like want that. you to see it because first of all they don't know if you're gonna snitch or not. <laughs> right. And the second of all, you could be like, This is my guy's crib without knowing it's a it's a trap house. You could be right. like, Hey, my boy Joe always lived here. I don't know his fucking name, so we're gonna use Joe. My boy Joe always lived. You always thought he lives here, right? And the first few times, I just thought it was just a normal house. It's a normal household. Hey. He lives here. A game. He's, you know, he's not letting me go to other places because it's his house. He's saying I can only chill here. We can only chill here, and that's it. We only game. We talk shit, and then the story. And then he didn't talk no type of gang shit around me. He wasn't talking about yeah, we're gonna hit this mother. No, it was see motherfuckers that like that in the games. Dead. That here's the thing: motherfuckers who talk like that in games, I feel like. Are the first ones to talk against you. They're the first ones to snitch. Yeah. Because, first of all, Facts. if they're talking about whatever bullshit that's going on, for example, you're not part of anything. Right. You're not affiliated with nobody. But they're talking like this in front of you. You're going to be like, uh, I'm going to stay away from this motherfucker. And when shit gets cracking, you'll be like, yeah, so, um. <laughs> right. Yeah, his last name is Smith. <laughs> He's a fucking asshole. <laughs> he lives over here. And he was talking about, you could easily, because, first of all, you got you got somebody who can talk way too right. much. And that's a big problem for your organization. But that's how you run a fucking trap. He and, ran but, it like a military, uh, like a military base. But there was some, there was some cases where they they knew that I wasn't on shit because I'm not like no no grimy type of dude or nothing like that. Yeah. I don't be on bullshit or nothing. So then they're just kind of like the way you look, right? So just look you like can tell. he's not about to steal shit. He's not. He doesn't have an ulterior motive being in here. He just wants to play the fucking game and chill. Isn't me. But you can tell who's on bullshit and who's on not. Right. Especially in your neighborhood. Yeah. You're walking down the street. You can just tell by face alone. Right. That motherfucker's on bullshit. That mofo's cool. You can tell on the street. And the major thing is, for me, they're always high. Yeah. Be it on weed or other shit. Right. That's how you can tell. And the bags in their eyes. Mm Mm-hmm. And their facial expressions and their walking says it all. Right. So me growing up, well, I had a story which was not too long ago. I went to a hookah lounge. Right. Went, hung out. It was by myself. Had a couple drinks, smoking hookah, and I'm getting ready to leave. As I'm walking home, I'm walking to the, walking to the train station. 
I could just see right it was two guys, two Latinos. I could tell right away these motherfuckers up to no good. And I can tell. Because I've been seeing it my whole life. The bags in their eyes, because they're drugged up, be it on weed or other shit. Their walk and their talk. Mm-hmm. And as I'm walking past, I'm smoking a cigarette, and I'm walking past in front of them. I walk past them. It was uh, it was a shorter guy, a lot skinnier, and there was a taller guy, a lot chunkier. The chunkier guy turns and yells to me, got that dro, got that dro. I was like, nah, I'm good. And he responds back, a little bit more agitated, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And I kept walking. I'm like, I can tell right away. They're because on bullshit. They're on bullshit. And two, okay, what if you had that shit? I wanted to buy that shit. But because the more, the way you motherfuckers give me the, whatever energy, the vibe I got from them, it was an instant moment. As soon as I whip out my wallet, right. take his money. I can tell right away. And I'm sorry if I spit on you. <laughs> no, you didn't. You're good. But um, I can tell right away. And that's because, you know, we both grew up in the hood. We both dealt with all types and of you crazy do, shit. They and you can know. tell. They you can, can read. See. You can read them and they can read you. So <laughs> by me being more defensive by saying, no, nah, I'm good. You can tell in the agitation. Like, this motherfucker's good. He's not a fucking tip. He's, you know, he's not a quick, uh, quick right, jump. Right, he's not a quick, yeah. So, I just kept going. And I was buzzed. I had a few drinks, and I was buzzed. But I was like, yeah, no. I'm good. Right. But with them, they... Yeah, there we go. Salute. Salute. j a little too warm. Yeah, definitely. All right, mm-hmm. so everybody in the trap, they knew that I wasn't on bullshit. Yeah, because they can tell. They knew I wasn't trying to, like, steal drugs. They knew I wasn't trying to play pole position. They knew that. So mm-hmm. it was at a point where they didn't want to, like, frisk me anymore. They were just like, D, just walk in. Walk in, in and walk out. That's or, it. Walk in and walk out. And me, I'm super paranoid. I'm looking like... You I'm sure you want to search me? Them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want you guys to think anything. Because here's what I'm thinking, worst case scenario, I'm like... So what if somebody else in there is plotting to like steal or rob or do some shit and then they do it at the exact same time where I come in so it will look like I, I did, did something. Yeah. So then I will always try to force them. Like it was a time where they didn't even want, they were just like, D, you can leave, you straight. And I'm looking like, bro, bro. check me so I could go home, bro. <laughs> just check just me. Just fucking check me. Because I don't want anything. Grab my shit, check my book bag, make sure I'm good so I could go home. Because I don't want to leave. <laughs> right. And some shit supposedly ends up missing. Right. And now I'm on your target. Right. I don't want to be your target. Just fucking check me and get it over with. So it that only way takes you know, like 10 seconds. That way you know fucking Billy over there was the one that fucking took your shit and it wasn't me. Right. Just fucking check me and get it over with. Because you only invited two people, D and Billy. Right. We checked D on his way in. We checked D on his way out. We checked D on um, Billy on his way in, but we didn't check Billy on his way out. And somehow, five games, a console, and a whole fucking kilo was missing. Right. Where Billy live? We're going to Billy's house. And that's Next. why I didn't want to get caught into the bullshit. That's why I'm looking oh. like... No, keep that same routine y'all had before. Don't get comfortable. Frisk me in, get my shit, look through my back, do the same shit. Don't fucking stop. Yeah. Because I don't want to come in this motherfucker and never leave again. Exactly. All right, so Latin King thing, he's supposed to just fucking drove me up to Walmart. Okay, before we go into that, motherfucker, we are 53 (laughs) minutes in. (laughs) And now we're getting to this fucking story. (laughs) He drove it to Walmart. And what he do? Buy some rounds? <laughs> no, he didn't buy a round. I suppose he just bought groceries, bro. So. Wait, so this was a Latin King with a heart? He, he took you to get your groceries? Bro, that was my homie, though. That's no way. I but ain't bullshit. I didn't, I ain't, I didn't hey, know his game, his other life, but that was my homie. He was cool. That shows you not, you know. He was cool as fuck. Let me not get deterred from the story, but keep going. All right. He goes so, take you to Walmart and get groceries. Right. Yeah. So then I just grab a few groceries, stuff like that. He was like, yo, I'm about to kick it with the homies. You want to come? I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I ain't got shit to do. Fuck it. Let's go. And you thinking this guy was in a gang, so you ain't thinking homies. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> you I think come. he was thug life. Right. So he take me there, and then I see a whole bunch of motherfuckers game banging hard as fucking, and I just knew, like, oh, shit. shit. 
this shit oh, again. Oh, shit. But then he he confirmed to make sure. All right, so He's there's good. something about this guy. He has no facial expressions whatsoever. So the motherfucker could beat anybody in poker. <laughs> right. So if you stab him, he'll just be like, oh, Ow. shit, you stabbed me. Like, no expressions. He'll be like, <laughs> Ow. Take out knife, stab you with it. Does it hurt? He has no type of emotion. So he might be like a sociopath or something like that. But that was my homie. He was cool. He was but then, chill. all right, so I come in there. I see everybody game banging, shaking up, and all this other shit. Even the chicks shaking up and shit. My the queen, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm about to fucking die in this house. And then he just looking at me super calm. He looking like... <laughs> Nigga chopped me up in my life. <laughs> All I wanted was some milk and fucking Flintstone cereal. What the right. fuck? Some Fruity Pebbles. Right. But then he looked at me so calm. He was like, bro, you straight, man. Ain't nobody gonna touch you, bro. You cool, man. Yeah. yeah. So then I'm just hanging out with them, chilling with them on a the couch. I get like a beer and I'm just fucking like chilling and shit. So everybody was pretty friendly and shit like that. Uh, one of the guys that I met, that's, well, he had like some gang tattoos. I don't want to say nothing specific though, but yeah. but he was cool. He was trying to get me being to talk a, to one of these like game banging ass girls. Being and, a king, <laughs> he most likely had a crown. Yeah, he had a crown. It's, I yeah. think it's a five point crown. But I didn't want to uh, be too specific, mm-hmm. you know? No, I, I grew up around, I grew up around kings, yeah. jivers, D's, um... Disciples, uh, well, these are Latin maniacs, disciples. Right. Um, and I want to keep it as general as possible. I, I don't want anybody that. to be pointed out. So I know, like, a lineup like, type shit. I know, like, the skull with a top hat that's the gyrus. I know the pitchfork was the Latin maniac disciples, the crown was the kings, the cobras was the actual the cobra. And especially that my brother used to go to school, my brother was never affiliated with any game, but the most the school. Had a bunch of games in it. The most, the only game that actually pissed him off and uh, drove him nuts was the Cobras. Ah. And he used to hate it because when he used to walk through school, when he was in a going through classes, they he used, hiss or some shit. They hiss. They whoop you. Yeah, and they used to hiss, and that was like a call sign. He used to hate that shit, and then he, he most of his problems were with Cobras. But a lot of his friends, when he was in school, were. Uh, or it's Kings, D's, and fucking uh, Jivers. So they used to have problems with the Cobras. Right. Um, but there was some alliance before. But that all that shit. Always alliances between game bangers always fucking fall. Because right. some shit happens. And then next you know. This once alliance that we had. It turns into shit. Right. Like, you heard about the peoples and folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is that now? Right. It's dead. That shit is dead. Because now you got peoples on peoples and folks on folks. Like seriously. What is right. shit is that? That's just, Nobody that's just kind of how that culture is. Shit, look at the look at uh, LMDs, Latin Maniac Disciples. Those yeah. motherfuckers had got a civil war with themselves. Right, that's how shit be, man. That's a tough life, but uh, but I go ahead. You had the story. Um, yeah, they they were friendly. They gave you a beer. They, did they offer you any food or shit? Yeah, they offered me like chips and shit. Like everything is fucking cool. <laughs> You're like at an outing, like a family <laughs> outing and shit. You're like, yeah. yo, this is okay. This dude with like the, is, is the this, gang is with like, the crowd and this shit smooth? like that. It was really cool. We just talking, cracking jokes and shit like that. He wanted me to try try to holler at this game banging ass girl. Yeah, I tried. That shit was not dead. working. That shit was, was dead. dead. <laughs> she was not trying to fuck with me. So everybody cool, shit like that. I'm looking like, oh okay, I fuck with them. Yeah, it's good. And then you know, then they said that they were about to go somewhere. So I just like fucking rolled with my homie and shit like that yeah. up there. So we was at a this, you know, I'm not gonna say the place. You don't have to say no place. But we ended up at a at a fucking alley. And then this was when shit got real while I almost like fucking shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so the same dude that was like cracking jokes with me, telling me to talk to the old girl, he pressed me. But but at then I thought that shit was about to get real about it, but he just kinda wanted to test what my heart was. I didn't yeah. know at that moment though. So then he just got really fucking serious, like, empty your fucking pockets, nigga. And now I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm, like, tearing up. but I'm, And then he kind of, like, reached for my pockets. So I'm just putting his hands away, like, nah, nah, I'm cool. Empty your fucking pockets or I'm going to knock you the fuck out. And I'm just scared. I'm not letting him get into my pockets. I'm tearing up and shit. And I was like, man, you ain't taking shit from me. And he was like, 
hey, I'm fucking with you, shorty. And then everybody started laughing. I was so fucking scared, bro. Heart was racing. Whoo. Especially you outnumbered. I thought okay, he was going to knock me the fuck out, bro. I thought I was going to get beat the fuck up. Here, for example, to say you knocked his ass out. That's <laughs> a wrap. D, you're outnumbered still. <laughs> By a whole gang. By a whole gang. So either <laughs> way you knocked him out, they're going to be like, damn, this guy just knocked him out. Right. But he can't take all of us at once. Right. You're still fucked. And I'm not even going to lie at like I was some fucking type guy. I was scared as fuck. That's how you I was starts. crying. I was shaking. But I just didn't let him get in my fucking pockets, though. There you go. And then he was like, I'm fucking with you, shorty. Everybody laughed. He fucking hugged me. He was like, oh, man, it's all, you know, it's all good, man. You know, shit like that. But then they were shooting a fucking MAC-10 in the fucking alley. I got to so, pull up a MAC-10 specs, but keep talking. Ooh, okay. All right, so here's the thing. So they're letting off a fucking MAC-10. <clears throat> So, they're not letting the whole clip go and shit like that. They're just letting off a few rounds with that motherfucker. Yeah. And then they decided that they thought it would be cool if I were to shoot the motherfucker. And I'm looking like, all right, so here's my smart-ass response because I didn't want to shoot it. I was like, hey, I don't want to have my fingerprints on the gun because I don't know if there's bodies on it or not. Exactly. And it was like, oh, okay, that's cool. It's like, but you got a long sleeve shirt, though. Wrap that shit around your hand and let that shit go. And I was like... You motherfuckers. <laughs> you motherfuckers. So now y'all have any plastic gloves? Is anybody in this part of this fucking king sect is a germaphobe? So none of y'all niggas germaphobe. Right. None of y'all have fucking guns. I mean, none of y'all have fucking gloves. Y'all right. are a piece of shit. Right. So I did that. I used my fucking sleeve. It was extra long because, you know, it was a while back. That's when we wore oversized clothes and shit like that. So... I let the whole round of the MAC-10 go. So, I think it was like 30 shots or some shit. All right. So, in the movies, when you see a MAC-10, that shit fires forever. Because it's a movie. So, But in real life, that's just like two seconds. Bro. At the most, pretty much. So, if depending on what it was, the rounds. So, there's a 45 APC, which stands for uh, Automatic Cold Pistol. That's the name of the round, the 45. And then a 9 millimeter. So you're looking at, so if it's 30 rounds, they had a 45. Okay. But it was 32 rounds. They had a 9 millimeter in that bitch. So you could fire both of those Well, I don't know rounds. if it was 30 or 32 to be real. All you, all you heard was... <laughs> That's all. all you heard was a chainsaw <laughs> for like a good second. Dude, it fires. For a 9 millimeter, it fucking fires 1,250 rounds a minute. For, for a 45 APC, it fucking fires 1,090 rounds a minute. Because... In the movies, it looked like that fucking, like the clip lasts like one minute. Yeah, that was, shit was like two fucking seconds. Just, rah, like, oh shit. Yep. And it was all excited, like, let that bitch rip. <laughs> let that bitch rip. <laughs> like, oh shit, that's it? <laughs> that's it? I thought in the movies it wasn't last longer. <laughs> nah, bro, you don't have an extended clip. You're good. It was only 30 rounds. Come on. Yeah, but. Help me, help me, fill, it, uh, help me, help me fill another magazine up. Don't worry about it. Right. Fingerprints all over fucking shells and shit. <laughs> Dude, right. you're fucked. You are fucked. <laughs> right. But but they wasn't even on bullshit. They weren't trying to get me on nothing. They made yeah. sure that, you know, my fingers was covered by, you know, my sleeve and shit like that. So, I think it's pretty cool. I say, you know what we should do one day? What? Go to the gun range. I'm down. You have a 40 card? No, I don't. Apply for your 40 card. I need to redo mines because I fucked up my name. Damn. They fucked up my name. My bad. They fucked up my name, so I need to redo mine. But get your Ford card. We take a drive to the motherfucking uh, the range. Come back, do a cast, drunk again, and talk about what we shot. Twelve oh, gauge, one fucking uh, thirty eight revolvers, a three fifty seven revolver. Come back right. with a swollen fucking wrist because a three fifty seven. Talk about you lucky, you lucky punk. <laughs> <laughs> right. Was that one round or was that 325 rounds? <laughs> right. You caught yourself lucky. But yeah, but after after that, they saw just shooting guns for a little bit. Everybody, they was fucking with me. They was like, hey. They was like, dude, if you got a problem, you cool, man. So my question problem, is, um, have you seen any of these gents recently? I'm talking about as in the past two years. No. 
Have you communicated with these gents recently in the past two years? Uh, only the uh, Arab dude I'll talk to. But I think I talked to him maybe like, yeah, like around two years, three years or yeah. something like that. And everything's like still cool the same. Yeah. yeah. We're still pretty cool. It's good. Yeah, because I kind of had a perception of game bangers really. Even though I kind of grew up around that environment. But I thought that because I was in there, I thought they was going to try to like, you know. Recruit be on show. bullshit with me or try to recruit right. I thought it was gonna be all of that type of thing. I had a friend. So, so I have a friend who I thought was a friend. In high school, he was part of the football team. And I had twisted my ankle really bad. And I just like I hate physical I really hate conflict. Yeah. So me being part of the football team my freshman year, I twist my ankle really bad to the point that I still fuck up my ankle the same ankle I fucked up. Twists yeah, on its own. Hurt. It still yeah. hurts every now and then. Um, so it made me quit football. And there's one guy who was part of the football team. I did not know. Cool guy. You wouldn't even think this motherfucker. Just was, like my uh, homie. I had no idea. He was cool. He was suave. He was confident. Like, I thought this motherfucker was great. Until that son of a bitch told me. Hey, man. I really want you to be part of the uh, part of this oh, game. Oh wow! He's like, I could bless you in, and I could bless you out. And first of all, I'm not no gullible. I'm not, not a gullible fuck. Right. The thing is, I don't know what it was. If they needed more motherfuckers, or it's probably a numbers game. It could be a numbers game, or it probably saw something in me because I was very intelligent. Right. As a young kid. Um. So in my head, I was like, Nah, dude. He yeah. didn't push. But it still pissed me off because I'm like, first of all, I saw he's a friend and also as a as a player as well, along with me. Yeah, I was there for football for freshman year, but still, like, you helped coach me in certain things. You were the only one that actually, out of the whole team, you were the only one that gave me compassion. Right. Especially when I quit. Everybody else called me a quitter. You actually said, you you know, you actually helped me out. And now, you're giving me this shit? Right. And it was part to be uh, OAs. I forgot what the fuck it called. Yeah. What the OA stood for. But my thing was, like I told you about my brother, he he didn't care. For, he was affiliated with nothing. He didn't care for the games. But the ones that gave him problems was the Cobras. But the one that gave me problems. I wasn't affiliated with anything. But the one that gave me problems was the OAs. Mm. There was one guy in particular who stole my Game Boy. I fucking hate him to this day. And I see him around the neighborhood to this day. And it's like. <sighs> right. What's stopping me for grabbing this bottle of lovely Jameson and cracking it over upside your motherfucking head? Right. But I just don't. I just dodge him. Conversation, all this other shit. Yeah. Um, but when he told me that he, want, he wanted me to join the OAs. Right, like, get the fuck out of here. I was like, nah. And what's funny was, it was during lunch period, and I was doing my math homework. I'll never forget, I was doing my math homework, finishing eating lunch, I'm sitting by myself, doing math homework. I was always a solo type kid yeah. in high school. My sophomore year, freshman year, I made friends with, soft, with uh, seniors. I don't know why I put myself through that pain, because I made good friends with them, and I said, <laughs> oh, they're gone the next year, and it's like, eh. Right. <laughs> So this was uh, this was sophomore year. Like I said, I did it freshman year, and it wasn't even a long freshman year. I quit, um, and I fucked up my ankle. I never forget that shit. It was during training too. I fucked up my ankle bad. So the field we were on was not very even. Yeah. So when uh, we were lined up, I was a defensive lineman. We were lined up, and buddy hit hike, and we charged up. <laughs> I'm blocking buddy. I moved my foot. I, it was uh, my right foot. I moved it back to hold myself um, right. better. To brace yourself, yeah. To brace myself. And I didn't know it was a small little like divot ah. in the ground. So my foot bent a little bit. Ooh. So as I'm holding it, and when he hit me, that's when I lost my footing. And I fell back and twist my shit with his Ooh. weight. I got up. I screamed real quick. I got up. And I started limping to the water fountain. Uh, the coach, the head coach at that time, uh, called me over to him. I was not listening. Right. He was telling me to come towards him. I was, I was not listening. 
So I walked all the way to the water fountain, limping, uh, drank some water, put water in my helmet, um, put it to the side. I put it to the side, and um, I walked back. And he got into my face, like, why you didn't come to me? Why are you? I was calling you. You should have just came to me. What's wrong? I was like, I'm like, coach, I, I'm like, twisted my ankle. Right. And it's hurting like a motherfucker. That bitch was swollen. Right. Um, I don't know if I tear any ligaments. All I do know is, um, I'll never forget my father actually got me a cane because it was hard. It was, the next day it was horrible to walk. So I want to say I did tear my ligaments. Yeah. But I never got it treated. Right. So I was walking, I remember walking to school with a cane because it was horrible. It was swollen. It had a fucking, it was throbbing. And, uh, excuse me. I remember that. So after I healed up, I quit. And this guy was the only one to show me compassion compared to everybody else mm-hmm. on the team. Which, to tell you the truth, I don't fucking remember their names. Right. Because they never mattered. Because right. I never really cared. But he was the only one that actually showed me compassion. And then when he told me to join, he lost all respect for me. Yeah. And I told him that. And I told him never to speak to me again. Yeah. Then I told my sister because him and my sister were cool. I told my sister. My sister ripped him. Mm. And that's when he, my sister never talked to him either. Damn. Yep. It's funny how at least these motherfuckers you were talking with yeah. never even they bother. Never even- yeah. To recruit you. Yeah, they were just like, yo. They cool, showed you, the they they fucking showed you friendship. They showed you basically compassion and love. And I thought I was getting the same from this guy. Not knowing he was part of a fucking game. Right. And he's trying to recruit me. Right. At least they never bothered. They showed you the good times to hang out, drink, chill, whatever, play right. video games. They or pushed me past my limits. Fucking shoot a Mac 10. Like shot a fucking gun. Like. Hell, one of them even pushed you up to see where your courage lies. <laughs> right. Knowing, even you yourself saying like, like last time. I was time, such a pussy. I, I didn't know last time no on the smoke. bus. Yeah. You got into a fight with them and lucky for you, your boy who, you know, you hardly even talk to. Ooh, defending yeah. you, whooping their ass. Yeah. But even that point, it showed that. When D is pushed to his breaking point, he will snap and his defend himself. Right. But I don't want to seem like I'm a fucking tough guy, though. Because I was straight pussy when he approached me. Instant pussy mode. Like, no, it's... I, like, I didn't want him to rob me, though. Exactly. I didn't want his hand in my pocket. And I think he would have took he would have <laughs> took whatever you had if you would have pulled out and be a little bitch about it. Right. Basically, since you, he wanted to see if you were... Had the cojones. Right. So fuck But that shit felt yourself. legit, though. That was some legit shit I felt. I was like, oh, I'm about to fucking die. Oh, man. I would have fucking... But then, I'm already crying. I'm already shaking. But I'm just not going li- to open up my pockets and just be like, here. I never really got that growing up. And that was because my mother says that I have a very uh, imposing, like... Yeah. I'm very, I could be threatening... So when growing up, I didn't really have any problems like certain uh, games or anything like that. I was that. always or small, certain, so yeah, I'm a short guy too. Me, you're about the same height, but I'm a little bit chubbier. And my mom always said, like, you know, you're, you're kind of imposing on people. That's why these game bangers don't fuck with you in high school. Right. Because when I was in high school, Freshy Friday, the guys who would be bullies were fucking bangers. Right. And they never fuck with me. Right. And I remember Freshy Friday, I somebody threw a penny at me. I grabbed that, caught it, and chucked it right back at him. Right. And they're like, fuck him up. <laughs> Somebody fucked me up because the motherfuckers he was walking with were smaller than me. Right. And I was ready. And nobody wants that type of smoke, but. No. But the thing is, I I wish I was like six foot fucking five, you know, 300 pounds. Big. Right. I'm not. I'm fucking 300 pounds, fucking five foot seven. Right. Yeah. Not that tall of a fucking guy. But my mother was like, you're very imposing, I mean, you know, to a right. chubby guy. Like, that's why people don't fuck with you. And I definitely to my brother. wasn't. But I was cool with a lot of motherfuckers, man. You want another shot or you good? I'm good. All right. All right. Cheers I'll take with your a beer. swig with the beer. Salute. Salute. But that that makes me think about the whole game banging culture. Well, it's like, uh, I fucking get it. The start of it was mainly to protect themselves I from get it. certain folks. So, for example, before minorities were becoming um, 
you know, you had black gangs during the time. You had black gangs, Irish gangs. Like, if you broke up the gangs in early U.S. history, you had a lot of them were white. Mm-hmm. So you had like British, German, Irish, Scottish. You know, a lot of them were right, and it was mainly because if you weren't like Anglo-Saxon motherfucker, right, of a or German, you weren't white enough. So if you were fucking Irish or Scottish, you were seen as shit. Right. There was even a saying that you know, uh, the Irish were saw less than black folks at the time, and you yeah, know, black folks were saw as dirt. Yeah, that, that's facts. That's accurate. Yeah. And one guy said a statement had a statement like saying uh, about Irish saying like at least Negroes clean their houses yeah and talking shit about Irish folks right but um so that was a time where gangs were becoming much more prominent that you know protect themselves protect the communities protect the people against you know these fucking assholes who were causing problems so as time progresses you had the same thing with minorities you had them creating gangs Stones, GDs, motherfucking um, kings, jivers, right, cobras, the models, right, all these. Yeah. A lot of them were presenting themselves against, uh, you know, white gangs and other gangs as well. So at first, right. one of the major gangs, I remember my grandfather, uh, he, when he came to the States, it was like 19. <sighs> it was like 1950 something. Yeah. No. It was like. To the next episode of Incompetent Nerds, please tune in for part three of this conversation with me and D. <laughs> I got y'all motherfuckers. We'll continue this story in the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. Peace out. Peace.